All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm so sorry to start up a little bit late. Uh, I'm not really a techie guy with this technology uh, computers, but uh, we're here. So welcome to our presentation. And uh, what we're going to be learning today is uh, about the school. And uh, you see here. So this is the uh, the contents that we're going to be talking today. We're going to talk about the school operation. And the second topic will be food, clothing, and school supplies. Uh, the third uh, will be rules and safety. And the number four will be a school phobia. And number five, we will have a good habits and engaging your children or your students. Number six, we'll be talking about engaging your kid in a learning new language. So this time, if your interpreters can uh, do interpretation, will be appreciated. Thank you. So, just uh, double checking uh, the interpreter, yes, or wait for me to pause. Jean, can you tell me if the interpreter is any time? Because I cannot hear anybody do interpretation. Um, actually, they are in the different classroom. So I think it's good for you for them. Um, you make pause for three or two, three or five seconds between each few sentences. OK. Okay, please, okay. interpreters, if you need more time, please send a uh, send message in the chat box to let us know. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, I'm going to continue then uh, with the number one is with the school operation. As everybody knows, uh, this school year, this time, uh, this uh, 2024 and 2025 will be start in September the 3rd and will be end in June 20 to 25. Then the school, uh, in the school, uh, we have two semesters and semester means like uh, for example, uh, we're going to start in September and we're going to be evaluating uh, sometimes in January or February. And then the other one will be February to June. So that's how the semester works here in Canada. Uh, school hours, it's um, it's the scheduling. We're going to have a, a talk about that because some school uh, the education uh, has been changing. The school district has been changing. They've been doing some amendment because some of these parents they were trying, uh, they were complaining that the student they cannot get enough sleep or or something um, like that, right? Uh, another thing that we're been uh, is about the Christmas break. Uh, there is a Christmas break. Uh, we have a couple of days there, and then we have the March break and summer. Holidays. And, uh, and this time too, I would like to have, since I cannot uh, see who's online, 
And if parents, they do have a question, please uh, interpret this. If uh, any time that you see or you feel like you have a question, it's not clear what I'm saying, please just uh, tell the interpreters or anybody online, uh, please uh, ask, raise your hand or send a chat. I'm sure uh, Jean will be notifying that and let me know uh, anytime I can stop. Then uh, we are going to be talking about report cards. Uh, report cards for high school, which is grade nine to twelve. Uh, we it has been it's going to be given uh, four times per year, one in the middle of each semester, and the second one is given at the end of each semester. The students are grade and percentage. They need a grade of sixty percent or higher to complete a class. Um, Many newcomer students, uh, you may ask uh, how you're going to calibrate, uh, how you're going to be taking notes, or how my students going to get this 60% if he doesn't know English. Well, uh, in high school, for example, they do sit in English class and they do go to another class just to be listening and to improve their English. And this, that's where uh, this notification 60% is coming. Uh, uh, in place, right? Uh, the other thing is for peace mind, if let's say your students, you're coming and uh, they are at the age of 14, uh, which is grade nine, usually, uh, the student have an opportunity to still catch up with the English language from grade nine to grade 10, which uh, uh, it is very important, grade nine and 10, because it's the foundation to take all the way like your class in grade 11 and 12, which is very crucial because you have to have at least 18 uh, um, credits in order to graduate high school. But as I say, uh, English is important. And that is the two years that what I'm saying, like on preparation for uh, the classes for mathematics, science, and, and other topics. That's a very important subject in, in a school, right? Then we have elementary and middle school. Uh, elementary school is uh, starting at a grade uh, kindergarten uh, to grade five, and then element uh, the this is the elementary school, and our middle school is start in grade six to grade eight. Uh, even them uh, giving them three times a year, one on the fall and a spring, and another one the last day of school. Grades are given on scale, uh, scale uh, from one to four plus. And uh, once again, it's uh, um, to my experience here in Canada is that in middle school or in in, in elementary school too, uh, they they start to uh, teach the student how to spell, how to read, how to comprehend, and how to do mathematics. Uh, but in a in a huge chunk of their time too. The, the teachers and the principals, they are very, uh, like, um, they, they um, motivate the student to get connected and socialize and do a sport and, like, uh, being very important, uh, not like uh, in another part of the world, like the country where I'm coming from, mathematics is very important and my student has to compete in order to get the grade, but here in Canada, it's it's a balance of both. Okay. <clears throat>
Now, this is very new uh, for uh, for some, but some uh, from us because uh, usually the in in the past, uh, let's say, fifteen years that I've been working in a school, uh, this the time that uh, start uh, is seven thirty to two p.m. Uh, the high schoolers until three p.m. But now uh, there is some student they have the option to be changed and uh, once again it's because some parents and some students they were putting their opinion and uh, their suggestion and some school principal listened to that advice and there is some school that they change the time so we want to emphasize here like as a newcomer to not mix up the time if you are this is your second semester or this is your second year it's going to be a little bit confused so uh, we have to be. Uh, we have to know what time the school start and what time uh, ends. And as you see here, and I'm sure um, Jean is going to be sharing this information with you after all. Uh, when we're going to finish up the information, and you will see your school where your children they're going to go, and then you will know what time the school start and what time the school ends. As you notice. Here, there is some example, for example, the school number one, Barkes Pond, uh, it's a, they, they handle, they, they teach grade kindergarten to grade five. They start at eight o'clock and they finish up. The dismissal time will be 2.30. That's the school ends, you know. And as you see, like uh, they still, they have the short day on Wednesday, like every Wednesday, the school ends ends at 12.15. Hi, Talermia. Um, could you please give more seconds between few sentences to make the pause? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. OK. Sorry, because I cannot read your, your text. <clears throat> Okay, then, uh, for example, uh, I'm going to put another example. Okay, here is the, a big difference uh, in terms of timing. Uh, for elementary school I, and middle schoolers, I, I don't think there is so much difference uh, per se. I, the only thing is what changed, for example, Bliss Carmen, uh, Bliss Carmen Middle School number 16 uh, is in grade, uh, grade 6 to 8. They will start at 9.20 a.m., but you see they will finish up at 3.40. Uh, before, it used to be at 8, and they end up at 3. Right now, they end up at Now, in, in, if you see another one in uh, number 20, Prato High School and Leo High School, a big difference in terms of time. They will start at 9 a.m. and they will be leaving school at 4.20. So they will practically, they will be all day in the school. Okay, this is the change that I want you, we want you to, to see and to not to Make note for yourself because your student are gonna be late, like they're coming at nine o'clock and they will be leaving school at 14, okay? For, uh, for the news, uh, for the French school, uh, there is not too much difference. 
uh, in comparison to the anglophone sector, the the English school, right? As you see, uh, Le Col Saint Anne, they start at A to the five, for example, and they finish up at T thirty four. So there is not too much uh, differentiation. Um, Another thing that I forgot to mention, uh, which is another big change for you, uh, it's, uh, for example, in, in number one, it is called the Batisor, uh, from maternal to grade two, they start at 820 at, and they finish up at 245. This is the same with the English school. Uh, kindergarten before in an English school, it used to start like at 820 and they finish up at 12 o'clock. Now they want all in, from kindergarten to grade five to be like a dismissal all together at 245, except Wednesday, that which is a short day. Now we're gonna be talking about number two, which is pretty much about food, clothing, and school supplies. Food, every day in a school, the, uh, your children should have a snack, and a, a snack and lunch, uh, as well a water bottle. Uh, here, even though like in, in summertime or in the winter time, children, they need to drink so much uh, water because either in winter time because it's too hot because of the heat or or in summer because it's hot right so we need they need to drink water uh in terms of food uh so many parents they ask what type of food i should send uh we are uh, some of the cultural association women working with the school principals to uh that student they can bring their own like traditional meal Obviously, you're not gonna make like a big like a lunch like in terms of uh, that needs to be. What one of the changes that has been adding in the school uh, with uh, our traditional meal is that in classes they do have like a, a microwave so they can warm up their food, you know. So as an example, like uh, you don't be shy to send uh, food like that, right? So. In terms of snack, don't worry to send like a, a banana, an apple, because they, uh, in the school, it has been like past five years, uh, they've been changing like to nurture, to, to sort of uh, motivate parents that they send a healthy snack, the healthy food for the children. In the past, like you can send like a potato chip, for example, a bag and, and the kids, they eat that, but now they they don't uh, they don't uh, they instead to motivate parents to buy uh, a bag of uh, chips. Yes, uh, they motivate parents to send a fruit in a state. <clears throat> so many countries uh nuts are so yummy and for me is i eat a lot but here in canada it's a we can't send nuts as a snack for our feeling uh because for me it's really yummy but uh you know fortunately here in school there is so many children that they have allergic to to nuts so or peanuts so all our school they are not free so please do not send any type of nuts uh, for a snack uh, for your children.
in Canada, uh, there is no need for uniforms. All our school, your student, they can go with short, with pants, with uh, with the sport clothing, if, if that's what they wish to wear. Uh, and so, but uh, they must be wear uh, proper clothing, for example, for the weather. Right now is summer, so your students or even teachers, they go to short in classes and like that or sneakers, right? So, but uh, in winter time, they have to wear properly, like having their winter pants, winter clothing, but important too is to send uh, some part of shoes, sneakers that your students can use while they're being in classes, but also they're using for gym classes or sport. And for your supplies, school supplies, uh, there is so many, uh, depends on the school, there is so many schools that they do have like a, uh, a way like you can pay a certain amount of money that you get all your, your school supplies for your children. In another school, they give you the list and you're going to shopping and uh, you choose and you, and uh, you go to shopping with your children and find out what type of books, uh, pencils, and everything, what do you need, uh, what do they need uh, in order to stay in class and do their homework and their exercise in school. Number three, we're going to be talking about the rules and safety. Every student has the right to be safe in a school. Each student is expected to behave in a safe manner. If you ever feel that your child is feeling unsafe, please talk to the teacher at school. Oh, I don't know how to speak English. I don't know how to do it. So then please reach out to us. And we uh, we work in a school. We have a department here in the multicultural, which is uh, for the English school. We we call Swiss, which is the Salaman Working School. And we visit all the school where your children are, and we uh, we can help you to find an interpreter if if that's the need, and we we can help you out with the meaning. And so please. Uh, be like uh, you have to be aside and you have to have a talk you have to find out how your students are doing you know sometimes children they don't talk about what's happening in the school and uh, so you have to find out and talk and uh, you uh, they will be if, if you find out something and you you struggle to communicate please do not feel alone we are here to help you as uh, as a settlement work in the school we have a team here uh, for the English school, and we have another team for the French school who will be happy to help you out if you need it. Rules and safety. The school bells indicate change such as breaks and lunch time during the day. All the school have strict policies in bullying and fighting. Children must always report to an adult in a school. For example, if a child uh, has been hitting or kicking or bite by another student, 
the student has to report to an adult. Usually, if, if this is happening in the playground, usually teachers they supervise their break times. So they have to go and talk to the teachers or the adult who is supervising them. You, they're not going to be allowing to, to because they get uh, hurt, they're going to be kicking or kicking the other kids. Many parents, I hear that, that, oh, if, if somebody is hitting you, you hit them back. No, this thing doesn't work like that here. So, because things are going to get worse, right? So, and many times, so if, it's, if the students, they talk about it and the teachers didn't pay attention. So once again, talk to us and we can, we're happy to go and have a meeting with the school teachers or the school principal that you have been hearing. You're worried about your child because you said the, the safety of your child, we want, we want them to be happy. We want them to, to go to come back to school and say, Oh, I'm happy to be here. But if there is something that's happening and you, we don't talk about it. So this is not normal. So we have to, we have to, we have the obligation to go and uh, as a parent and, and tell my worry and concern to the teachers or parents. Again, number three is just, uh, just uh, I'll say, uh, as I mentioned, that we actively, as a gentleman work in the school and PL worker, we are here to support the parents. We are here to support the students, and we are here to work with the school principal and teacher that our only, uh, our, our only goal is that your student will be successful in the school. And if that takes to meet the teacher, to meet another uh, type of support in the school, we make things happen for you. So anytime that you need our help, please let us know, and uh, we will be most happy to help you out with that. <clears throat> And number four, please, uh, this is very important. Your children cannot leave the school without letting you know or reporting to the teachers or school administration. It must be really sad or it might be so frustrated or it must be so complicated for the student who doesn't know English. We have the experience from children from grade three or four, they run away from the school. and. Uh, this is very, very dangerous because there is so many cars or we don't want something to happen to them, right? So that's what's very important for if your children, they have an appointment, for example, you have to let the teachers know, you have to let the school know that uh, my students, they have an appointment. So you can, you have to, you must come to school and talk to the school teachers or the school principal saying that your student has an appointment. But the student cannot live alone. Like just, oh, I have an appointment because my mom or my father say, no, you have to report to the teacher or uh, school administration in order to take your children away from the school. Number five, I think uh, I talk about it, but number six, this is a must. Please, we know that our children, they are very keen and they get English quicker than you. But please do not use your children as interpreter. You, you cannot do, they can, they can be happy to do that, right? But they can do that after school on the weekends or at night. But if you need ever an interpretation because you need something, please let us know. We will help you to do that. But don't use your children 
to inform or to do some interpretation because children, uh, they are happy to do it, but there is so many things confidential, for example, that they cannot expose themselves to tell uh, the principal. So, uh, so many times we, we got, uh, we got um, complaining for the teacher that this student has been missing two, three days class. And when we find out uh, the student has been doing interpretation for mom or dad to the hospital, to the bank, or to the drive uh, uh, a school car uh, for the parents. So please, this is, this is cannot happen. So please be mindful with that. Like your children, they have, and it's a must, they have to be in class. I want to talk about uh, school phobia, and uh, this is something like a change uh, in the family uh, life, such as moving to a new country with a new language can be very rough, can be very sad, and the children and some other symptoms, you know. Uh, some children, they are so happy, but then when they start a new school, that happiness goes down, right? So some of them, they may experience symptoms uh, symptoms and uh, um, on the weekends and other uh, school holidays for example right uh, they they maybe they have a difficulty in sleeping and frequent nightmares right so what what is uh, what is telling you that because they are worried they are they are sad or they are angry or because you know like they are under stress you know that like they don't they don't understand anything you know but one thing I like, uh, I have to tell you and as a father too, when I came to Canada, is that the children, uh, like they're like a sponge. Right now, they're having a difficult one, two, three days or a week, but in two or three weeks, they come into, they, they come in some two, three words, and then suddenly after one, two months, you see in them talking in English. So it is, it is important to tell you that this is normal, that the children, they're being, uh, they're being with, uh, they mean sad or they have a fear or they mean like sometimes like they have a stomach ache, you know, sometimes they have a nausea, probably vomiting too, probably diarrhea. Some, some of them, they pee in their beds because, you know, like this is so much like uh, they, they have in them. Like, so this is normal. As an adult, we can't communicate. We get frustrated. So the children, they have their own stress too, you know. So we have to be mindful and we have to support them and we have to spend time to play with them. And uh, as a father too, and as a sharing experience, uh, I'm, I must say that it's not a quantity of timing which you spend with your children. You spend a couple of minutes and uh, you tell them how much you love them. And uh, because that's, that is how they're gonna be feeling supportive that's how they feel, and that's how their uh, their sadness is going to be away. But we have to understand that they are under stress too. How to help your uh, student uh, assess your schedule, ensure that uh, your student have the opportunity to success in school, can be engaged in some activities that your children enjoy. So once again, uh, as I say, like it's not a quantity of time. So many parents are saying, they may say, oh, 
I don't have time because I'm working. I don't have time because I'm studying. Or you are busy all the time. But it's not the quantity of time, it's the quality that you engage your child and you spend time with them just for his success or his success. Empower your child. Some many of children because they don't they do not speak the language because they are different because we smell different because we eat different. Many children from here because they are curious. Although the multicultural we we are working so hard we're connecting we're presenting to the school. There is always somebody who's gonna make fun of, of somebody who's new in the school. So let's say if it's your child. Once again, it's how you can empower your child. So you can empower your child by talking, by having a conversation with, with them, you know. Ask them how, how, how the school is going, right? Tell me one thing like you love about the school. What happened today, right? So your child will be a little bit, little by little, is going to open up and tell you what he likes and what she didn't like, you know. So that's a way how you can have a conversation with them and find out how is the life in the school right now. Many, many parents, uh, they present us a concern. Uh, how can I get, how can I do that my child is, is going to be getting a friend? So in the school, there is a different way how to get involved, how to, like, uh, to be enrolling. Uh, you can enroll your children in clubs. Uh, you may talk to the teacher uh, on a sport, you know, or after the care programs. In a school, I know in a school they have so different sport. So your child can practice, for example, one of the like a uh, new the sport for me was badminton, right? And so many children when they find out that uh, they like to play this, they they start to play, you know, and they make friends. And uh, that's how, uh, as I say, I mentioned before, like it's a balance of life here in the school. It's a balance of socializing, playing. Uh, aside, like learning a new language, learning A, B, C, D, learning mathematics, one, two, three, but also having fun. And uh, it's very important Like if they, they have a, a friend, then they're going to be coming together. And immediately, I don't know how to call it, probably miracles, but I do remember, for example, my son, when we came to Canada, he not spoke any English, but the teacher uh, uh, put uh, a Canadian friend, a uh, classmate with him, and they were playing. You know, children, they are very innocent. They share, they play. I do not see, like, if, they don't speak, if you speak English or not. So it is very fun to see, like, two children culturally speaking, like, they do share meals, they do share the snack, and they talk, and that's how our children, they learn English, too. If your children it is doing really poor academically speaking, once or, or have a learning disability uh, that contribute to the problem, uh, 
I think once again, it, we're going back to the experience like a child cannot learn so much if there is so fear, uh, there is too much fear, if there is too much worries, or if there is something that like is bothering him in school. So once again, I think we have to come back and evaluate. And if there is some disability and you have uh, you have your help with, uh, with the multicultural, we uh, if you share this information with us, we will meet with the teacher and they have a special teacher who is going to be working one on one with your children, your student, right? Then being placed in a class, but there is a special teacher who will work with them uh, one hour or two hours per day. For middle schoolers or high schoolers, we as a Swiss worker in a school or PLF, we do have well, uh, we do have uh, tutoring programs in a school. Uh, we run, uh, for example, at FHS and Lua High School, uh, a different school. We have tutoring program with uh, our organization, which they work with us for the past, as I remember, like more than 20 years. Uh, they work with us, they do work with the student who provide tutoring and help the student to improve with their English with like, for example, uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers or help them out to, to do their homework in science, to do their homework in mathematics, you know. So it is difficult. Yes, it's difficult. So that's why uh, actively the settlement work in the school works with uh, our community partner and uh, we find volunteers to work with your student. This is a commitment of usually we do it after school, once or twice a week. Every week we are two times helping out in a school. is how to help your child or your children, your student. Interfere with is necessary. If there is something that's happening, for example, in school or in your neighbor, you have to take the step to address the problem. And once again, if it's somebody who's hurting your kid, somebody who's like, a, it's in middle school or high school, sometimes fights happen. So you have to, let the, the, the school know or let us know. Once again, if you don't speak English yet, please do not just be yourself alone because you are not alone. We're here to help you. We're here to, to convey, we're here to put together a meeting is necessary, you know, and uh, you have to intervene because you're not going to let things happen. Once again, if your students is not happy, if your student have some problems, like chances are that he's gonna or she's gonna stop to go to schools if she feels something. So we don't want that. We want your student to succeed. So we are here to help you. We are here to address the problem if there is some problem. It seems like English you know, it never comes and your children, they will be, or your student, they will be so once again tired, irritated, anger or sad and uh, which they have so much stress, they sleep so much, they don't want to come to school. Tell them, please remind them that it will, it will be okay, you know, eventually they're going to get the language. But once again, 
how will can I ensure that when it's middle school, which is when it's high school, there is a lot of opportunities. There is clubs. There is a sport. One of the things like it's happening right now, to like so many of our middle school or high schoolers, they doing the tryout for many different sports. For example, soccer. So many parents or many students say, I want to play soccer. I'm really good in it. Yes, but the protocol is the tryout that will start before the school starts. So that's one way how to ensure that doing activities that they love to do, that they connect themselves with the school. And that's one way, you know. But once again, is please tell them that it will be okay. It is important to listen to your child or your students. It is important to ask a quick question. Ask open question. For example, what makes you upset or what makes you happy in school? Because once again, it's the students, they may not talk to you like, oh, how is the school today? God, but that's good. It's not telling you anything. So we have to make things like in a really but it's uh, easy to understand and easy for them to share. What makes you happy? What makes you more upset? What makes you angry today? Then the children and students, they will be open up and they will talk to you. Teachers in Canada, they are very open to listen. Teacher in Canada, if you if you want to make an appointment to them to tell them like, my I'm worried about my child uh, because uh, he's sleeping too much or uh, he doesn't talk much so much in the school. You can make an appointment and you can you can meet the teacher. You know, another thing is if a teacher is calling you, it's not that mean that your child is in problem or he misbehave or there is some discipline things that has to be reported to you. No, sometimes teachers, they reach out to you because they want to talk. They want to share their accomplishment. They don't want to share the successful, the, the step that your child has been doing in school. So, Once again, it's, we have to be, take a baby step. They start with the child and shorten the school day and gradually increase the time they spend there until they are successful, last a full day. This is for the children in kindergarten or, or elementary school, right? So you can work for middle schoolers too. Like uh, here, as I say, the school is very important, but if a child is not happy, then we have to work a method that is going to work for, for you, but especially for your student, for your child. That is going to be something like it's going to be working. This one, uh, the last example that uh, we have in here is using reward. I think this is one of my favorite one as a father, uh, was a mom. You can, you can, you can invite your son or daughter to an ice cream, for example. And I'm, I'm not promoting ice cream or I'm not promoting McDonald's here, but just have something like to reward him 
or her and explain to him uh, and, and listen to him about his experience in the school. And then he's going to be sharing with you because you having a, a date, like a friend, like um, it's not, uh, you're not, you're the father, you're the mom, but at the moment that you invite them, you're making friendships. You, you're making sure that your child is, is going to share with you something really cool. And that is like, if, if he's, he's uh, having a hard time in school, he's refusing to go to school, but you got the opportunity by, by doing this rewarding activity with them, uh, to, to win like the game, like it's a win-win for both. Like you're frustrated because he's refusing or she's refusing to go to school. But in the end, when we have this conversation and taking them into accountability, listen to their needs and perhaps it's just a thing for listening, right? So. This is another one, like having a child that is scared to go to school can be a difficult experience for parents. It is important to talk to your child about their fears. Focus on being supportive and understanding of your child anxiety, but ensure that the child, your child knows that there are things that you can work on together to make the school experience less stressful and more enjoyable. Once again, usually your kindergarten, your five years old, your seven years old, your eight years old, they will not talk what's happening in school. I have a experience with uh, another parents one day that was sharing that uh, his daughter was bite by another student and the student never talked about it. But mom, when uh, uh, she was helping her daughter to change, find out that there is a bite in her arm. So, they went and asked the teacher that what's happening and uh, have a conversation with, with her, the student. And but also uh, that's where they find out that a student in the class was biting her. And what happened is that it was the problem wasn't just for the daughter of the parents. It was like the student had some sort of problem and it was biting, uh, biting like several students in the class. So the teacher never see that. Like, uh, like uh, she noticed that with other students, but never this this student uh, specifically because from a different cultures, she didn't speak the language yet. She did not say anything to the teacher and she was afraid or she did not tell mom. But she always, when she went to school, she was really like sad and she was crying all the time that they were leaving her in the school. So they find out what is, was the problem and they work together with parents and the teacher in order to work with the other parents to ensure that the child, they can get help for him and not keep him biting the students. Number five, <clears throat> we will talk about the good habits when starting a school. Attend school every day on be on time to class. Stay organized, write down all assignments, complete all homework, turn the homework, and turn the homework on, on time. It is very important uh, to attend the school every day and, uh, and be in class. With this, as we have so several problems with 
probably the little one because they can't take action by their own. But for the middle school and, and high schoolers, sometimes they miss a school. They're going to hang out somewhere else. Like they don't enter school. So once again, this is the explanation of that is because English is hard or because they don't have friends or because they have, they are afraid. So, but once again, it's just a mom, as a father, we have to find out what's happening. The good things here is that all, all the, our school, we have guidance in each school. In elementary level, we have one or two guidance. In middle schoolers, we have one or two guidance. In high school, we have, for example, afraid of high school, we have five guidance counselors. And their work is to work with the student to help them out, to listen to them. What are their worries? Oh, but they don't speak English yet. So this is one, one of the why that are the MCF, we have one staff at the, at the FHA, for example. So we have a student comes and talk to us and we help them out, you know. So we are in, in here to help your student. The same with my colleagues at the Franco Pan sector, Alicol Santan, we do have an office to listen to the student. And usually it's something like to do with a language, to do with a teacher that they, it seems like they have the feeling that the teacher, they don't like them, right? Uh, so we talk to the teacher and we help them out to to enjoy their class, to, to find out that uh, being in class, it, it is, it is it, it's gonna help them out to improve their language and not missing class because missing class is they're not gonna go anywhere. So they have to be in class. Good habits. Uh, listen carefully, follow direction, and come to class with all needed materials. A schedule time and each evening to prepare the next day in school. Seek for help from teachers and counselor as soon as needed, and don't wait until your child is overwhelmed. That's what I'm saying. Like, if if there is something that you think your student need to talk about it and you can't because teenagers, for example, they don't talk to mom, they don't talk to father because they are shy or because there are so many things that's happening in their life for students. So you can offer that uh, counseling and and uh, we, are, as I say, we're in the school so we can help to transition them from from uh, from their classroom to the, to the guidance and introduce them and talk to them, you know. So if it's a class, uh, we help them with the tutoring. If it's uh, needed to uh, to be listened to the students, we are there to to help them out with that. You know. You don't have to have English to get involved with your child's school homework and the school activities. This is something like uh, you can do it like you have to spend time, like uh, quality of timing of doing the homework by motivating her or him. Uh, for example, if they're standing, uh, they, they are in elementary level, uh, help them out to understand, right? So even though you don't understand the English, they're going to be sharing with you and they're really so proud of it what the, they do in terms of school homework, you know. Uh, with the middle school and high school engineers, it's going to be a little bit difficult because they have a different type of homework, but it's still, like, congratulate them because they're doing their homework. Congratulate them because they're doing something, right? So for their success in the school, you know. One of the way to to connect with Canada and to make new friends is encourage your student, encourage your child to participate in activities after school. 
for example, soccer, basketball, badminton, uh, tennis, uh, karate, swimming, any activities that your child um, loves to do because that is going to help for his his uh, mental health, but also it's going to help to be happy to 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 feel or him or herself uh, by doing these type of activities and aside that making new friends in his new country. All the school from all the students from grade nine. Right now, the Department of Education is giving them a computer, is giving them a laptop. And my experience from one to ten, six of the students, they don't know how to use a computer. So please, once again, sit with them and help them out to understand how to work with a computer. 100% of them, they know how to use this. But they don't know how to use the computer. In a school, there is no, there is no more opportunities to present homework by pencil and paper like that. It is everything in computer. Homework, they have to send it by team in a, and send it to, in Microsoft. They, they have to submit their homework in, in, in a website. If they don't know how to use a computer, then they're going to have trouble. So it is important to improve their computer skills. Also, uh, just uh, if in case uh, you uh, say you are like me that I don't like the, the technology, you don't know too much about computer, then uh, you can ask uh, ask uh, to put your son or your daughter in a computer class. We have uh, actively computer class here at the multicultural at any level, so from zero to uh, until you know how to how to use a computer very well. So. Once again, it's if your child needs help, please let us know. Good habits. Um, some students prefer a quiet place to help them concentrate in their homework, while others they fight helpful to work near uh, your, the parents or the, an adult so they can ask for help if they need it. Some students, they love to work with music. So this is something that I did. Uh, I do ask like in our school when we have a homework, we have some uh, instrumental music to be listening while we're doing homework. But some students, they don't like that. They need to go a quiet room. So we have a quiet room to study too. So it's the same in at home. If if uh, your child, if your students are doing homework, please do not put your TV or don't listen to music at that time because is they need a quiet time to do their homework. And the most important here is to find out what type of environment your child loves to do their homework. So as I say, some with music, some others, they may need to ask you some questions. So they, they love to be aside you, maybe in the living room. But once again, it's to turn away the computer and focus on them, like when they're doing their homework. Please help them to do, to, to do their task, right? Engaging your children in learning new language. 
learn and learn. Be the example for your children to follow. Don't just wait for grade school teacher to do their job. If you don't know the language, you will learn them together. A good way is like practicing, trying to, to be an example with them, right? Being with them and follow. Uh, if you're reading a book or you're listening to music or you're watching something, uh, cartoons, uh, it, it's very it's very powerful when you are together with your son or daughter, they're doing this thing. This experience, it's your child will be smiling, will be happy because mom and dad, they are learning together with him or her. And if you have in the language, then it will be easy for you to help out with, with uh, this new learning experience for your son. It is very powerful when mom or dad um, do this activity with the children. It's, it's beautiful. Something very powerful and beautiful that happened to me when I came to Canada is to set up a routine. And sometimes I forget and uh, I'm playing soccer in the evening and my son calls me and say, hey, it's a homework time. Uh, so it is very important that we have to prioritize, we have to have a schedule as an adult and book a time where we come together and do learning experience activities together. And once again, it's not the quantity, it's the quality of time that we are spending with our son and daughter. Let's read a book, let's watch a, a cartoon, let's, let's do something together that he and she appreciate. And don't take me wrong, they're going to call you, they're going to tell you, hey, it's time to read, it's time. When we set up this routine, the learning experience is going to be so beautiful and powerful for both of us. Like it's a win-win. Win for your student and win for you. That is the presentation for today. And uh, our contact information uh, here is my contact information is Jeremias de Coup. And I'm in the English school. Um, so my cell phone number is there, my uh, email, if you need it uh, to connect with me either in, uh, in the telephone or to an email. Like find me an email anytime if you have any question related to education of your children or you can send me a text it can be e-text or can be a whatsapp uh, i don't have whatsapp too right and my colleague who's work and in charge of the french school is Shanik. and anytime the same you can email you can text him at any time so once again i'm sure gene will be sharing this information with you so you can have access to our information contact and please do not uh, hesitate if you have any question, please do ask so, you know. Now, I mean, talking too much. So if you have any question, please, this is the time for you to ask. Jeremia, can you both go back two pages? Yeah, Isel is this page. Yeah, it's this page. Yeah. Okay. Any question? No. Any questions?
I think we got everything we wanted to know. So thank you, Termea, for today's in informative presentation. And thank you for teachers and our interpreters facilitating today's presentation. Um, I hope everyone enjoying the rest of the day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. See ya. Bye. Bye.